Our top story, the oxygen crisis in Uttar Pradesh. The death of COVID patients due to no supply of oxygen to hospitals is a criminal act and not less than a genocide is what the Allahabad High Court said amid reports of shortage of medical oxygen due to the rise in COVID infections. They said, we are at pain in observing that death of COVID patients just for non-supplying of oxygen to the hospitals is a criminal act and not less than a genocide by those who have been entrusted the task to ensure continuous procurement and supply chain of the liquid medical oxygen. Oxygen. This is what the bench of Justice Ajit Kumar and Justice Siddharth Varma said. The High Court observed that stories of hoarding of oxygen cylinders and harassment meted out to the poor who are begging for an oxygen cylinder to save the life of their near and dear ones, both at the end of district administration and police administration, are being viral in social media. Also mentioning deaths that have taken place of patients in Meerut and Lucknow, they said, we find these news items showing quite contrary picture to one claim by the government that there was sufficient supply of oxygen. Now, it's not just the Allahabad High Court, the Delhi High Court as well on the issue of oxygen. The central government's failures to implement the Delhi High Court's order to immediately supply the full quota of oxygen to Delhi evoke the judge's wrath. The court, which had ordered that Delhi must be given its full quota of oxygen by whatever means, asked the government to explain why a contempt case should not be initiated against it. Enough is enough. We will not take a no regarding oxygen supply. The centre has said that a compliance affidavit is being, is being filed by before the Supreme Court. Well, NDTV's Saurabh Shukla spoke to Ahmadmi Party leader Raghav Chadda for details. Right now we are uh, with uh, Raghav Chadda who is uh, managing oxygen for uh, hospitals in Delhi. And today he has uh, issued a oxygen bulletin. Raghav, what is the situation when it comes to oxygen in Delhi? Look, the total demand of oxygen in Delhi stands at 976 metric tons of liquid oxygen. In, against 976, which is our demand before the central government, we are receiving on an average close to 400, 430 metric tons of oxygen. Yesterday, to be precise, we got 433 metric tons of oxygen. That is, the demand is 976. We are getting 433, that is roughly 44% of our demand. The way the Arvind Kejriwal government has been managing the oxygen situation with reduced supplies is with better oxygen management. We are managing oxygen distribution in a way that even with reduced supplies, we are able to man the fort, we are able to sustain the Rada, existing uh, infrastructure. The central government is saying that uh, we have increased your quota, they have increased your quota. And, uh, but the problem is transportation, that is the one part of it. Another part of it, Delhi, in Delhi High Court also, uh, High Court said uh, and pulled up central government to provide you the required oxygen. You're what right. what is what is update on that? No, no, you are absolutely right. First of all, as far as quota is concerned, yes, our quota has been revised. From 390 metric ton, it was revised to 490. From 490, it was revised again to 590 metric ton. But unfortunately, this upward revision in the quota is only theoretical. The number two logistics, as you said, transportation of liquid oxygen. Now the Honorable High Court also recognized this fact and said in so many words that Delhi is not an industry state. Delhi does not have uh, cryogenic tankers plying on the streets of Delhi. We do not have a steel plant in Delhi. We don't have an oxygen producing facility in Delhi. Thank you, Raghav, talking to us. That was Raghav saying that he, uh, Delhi is getting just 44% of its total demand. In Delhi, with Sanjay Kaushik, Saurabh Shukla for NDTV. Well, to get you a sense of what the oxygen crisis means on the ground, we take you inside a Delhi hospital now to see what the oxygen crisis means and how lives are at stake. Inside this hospital in Kalkaji in Delhi are 10 babies, some as premature as 25 weeks, and the oxygen is running out. Another SOS from a hospital for oxygen, the Triton Children's Hospital is left with just two hours we flashed the hospital SOS this morning that only two hours was left and the supplier was nowhere in sight. We've just got a contact for a police official who said he's willing to help. So lots of times it's these kind of calls that actually help people get oxygen. The, the system has broken down so much that it is people helping in a personal capacity which actually gets people oxygen. So I'm going to call him now and hopefully things work out with him. My name is Arthur Agar. Ji. Um, just to introduce myself, I am an IPS officer. Okay. Uh, I just saw your tweet. I was thinking that it's an NDTV particularly. 
right. Okay. So I will set the at least three or four cylinders, big size. Three or four. Okay. Big size. That is the jumbo size cylinder. Okay. Tense moments later, the cylinders sent by the police official arrive, but it will last only hours. Delhi's smaller hospitals more and more have asked families to find oxygen, leading to a rush like at this government refilling centre in Mayapuri, this in West Delhi. Dilip, whose uncle is in the Gandhi hospital with oxygen saturation dropping below 75, has been here since yesterday afternoon. Two days ago, oxygen was my dad expired. My father has corona and my father is in the hospital. After that, the situation is now in the hospital. If you can see, arrange oxygen for Gandhi hospital. If you can see, the camera is clear. And now it's time to put the stamp on the date. These two brothers have managed to get a cylinder for their father in a hospital in Ghaziabad after arguing with officials. They say they have been given completely contradictory orders. There is a shortage in the hospital. They are saying that you are taking it. We are here and we will deny it. We will not give it to the hospital. With Meher Pandey and camera person Manoj Thakur, Revati Hariharan for NDTV. So an oxygen crisis there and an outcry over oxygen in Delhi over the last couple of weeks with even big hospitals like Max and Gangaram struggling with the lack of oxygen. But the focus really now on smaller hospitals in Delhi. Several small hospitals have almost stopped taking in new patients due to the lack of oxygen. There's almost no help from the government. Some hospitals have even discharged patients due to the lack of oxygen. One such in Jasola. Saurabh Shukla reports. We are standing at... Uh Royal Kalindi Hospital, which is at, which is in Jasola, and this is the poster right outside the hospital that we are out of oxygen. We are not taking any new admission. I am joined by the director of this hospital, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, what is the situation right now when it comes to oxygen? Right now, situation in Delhi is very critical in the term of oxygen requirement. Most of the my patient need oxygen high flow, that is five liter, ten liter. One patient needs at least seven to eight, uh, five to six cylinders per day. If we keep at least 10 patients, so we need 70 to 80 cylinders per day. But hardly we can provide 30 to 40, 50 in a day. After running four or five vehicles, 24 hours in Delhi, searching here and there. And we are able to provide hardly 40 to 45, but need is 70 to 80 cylinders per day. And you are managing these cylinders on your own or government is providing you these 40 cylinders? No, we are, we are managing our own. All directors and doctors are engaged in providing oxygen cylinders. This is the main issue. So you have discharged your patients due to lack of oxygen? Yeah, many of the, many of the my patients has to be discharged because of lack of oxygen. Okay, a patient on 3 liter and 4 liter, I have to discharge. This is the situation right now when it comes to small hospitals in Delhi and uh, you can see the poster that they are out of oxygen and literally they have to beg for oxygen cylinders from government and then too they don't, they don't get adequate supply. In New Delhi with Sanjay Kaushik, Saurabh Shukla for NDTV. Now, the central government has revised the country's coronavirus testing rules to reduce pressure on diagnostic labs amid a spurt in COVID cases. Healthy interstate travellers and COVID patients being discharged from hospitals after recovery must not be tested. The centre said over 2,500 labs in the country are working under tremendous pressure because of the rapidly growing caseloads. The centre said people who tested positive once, either by rapid tests or the gold standard RT-PCR, must not be tested again. Now, the situation in rural Uttar Pradesh in UP's Bulan Shahar, at least 18 people died in a fortnight just in one village of Parwana during the Panchayat elections. They had COVID like symptoms, but no COVID tests were done to establish if the virus was indeed the killer. A large number of migrants also returned home to vote, and that seems to have increased the spread of the virus. Now, the government has initiated COVID testing on a mission mode in the villages, but too little, too late. At Parvana village, 18 kilometers of Bulan Shahar, public announcements calling people to undergo COVID tests.
NDTV visited the home of Nazakat Safi, who used to work as a carpenter in Faridabad, but had returned home after the last lockdown. He recently took ill, was shifted to two hospitals, but died on April 22nd. Treatment proper नहीं मिला था. इसलिए heart की जो problem हुई है, heart attack हुआ, कभी भी उसको heart की problem नहीं थी. ना BP high था, कभी भी उसका normal situation. Bike पे गया treatment लेने के लिए, ना कि कोई ambulance में. The last rites of Buro Devi was being performed in the same village. It is suspected she too died of COVID. Villagers say at least 18 others have died due to the spread of coronavirus during the panchayat elections. 16-year-old Sumit was taken to two hospitals, but he didn't return alive. He took the Aurangabad and took the Aurangabad and took the Aurangabad and took the Aurangabad and took the Aurangabad. He took the Aurangabad and took the doctor and took the Aurangabad. लेकिन उससे कोई रिलीफ नहीं मिली। फिर हम दूसरे हॉस्पिटल में ले गए, वहाँ भी उसने ड्रिप लगाई, इंजेक्शन लगाया, वहाँ भी कोई रिलीफ नहीं मिली। फिर हम और बुलिंग शेल ले जा रहे थे रास्ते में, चार और आ जाके उसने दम तोड़ा। A health department team is at the village temple to appeal to the residents to get themselves tested. हर एक व्यक्ति का चेकअप करेंगे, जो भी किसी को भी कोई दिक्कत ह� और इनकी कोरोना से संबंधी जांच भी की जाएगी। अगर मृत्यु का और भी कारण के क्योंकि मृत्यु का कारण वहाँ से कोरोना पेशेंट निकले नहीं हैं ज़्यादा, तो उनकी भी जांच की जाएगी कुछ और कारण तो नहीं हैं। In Gularia village of Barabanki district, ten migrant labourers who stripped back home was sponsored by the Pradhan candidate, so they could vote in the panchayat elections. All of them took ill. A few had to be hospitalised. From campaign to voting and counting. Covid protocols were largely forgotten during the panchayat elections. Add to that an influx of migrant workers who returned home to vote. A rural Covid surge that has been masked by low testing. With Kamal Khan and Uma Sudhir Usama Shah for NDTV. And staying with news from Delhi, a fire broke out at UK Nursing Home in West Delhi's Vikas Puri around 11 p.m. last night. Eight fire tenders were rushed to the spot and all 26 patients fortunately were rescued safely, including 17 COVID patients. The fire originated due to a short circuit in a storeroom on the first floor and there were some patients on the ground floor. On reaching, firefighters entered after breaking all windows and took out the patients. Uh, there you can see videos that emerged where the hospital staff and firefighters can be seen assisting patients in the rescue operation. Well, let's now get you the latest from Karnataka and Bengaluru has crossed 3 lakh active cases. Active cases in Karnataka are 46 lakh of are 4,64,363 in Bengaluru. It's 3,1,712. The positivity rate in Bengaluru is a massive uh, positivity rate. In fact, throughout Karnataka is 29.03%. And even in Bengaluru, oxygen shortage, which has been a major issue ever since the second wave of COVID set in, continues to hit the patients in the city, with several hospitals even asking them to shift to other facilities as they have run out of stock. Hospitals in Bengaluru have been sending out appeals for oxygen and even asking patients who have been admitted to find a hospital bed elsewhere, all because they are running out of life-giving oxygen. On Monday... At least three hospitals indicated, including in letters to patients or addressed to whomsoever it might concern, that they were short of oxygen. Two deaths at Arka Hospital in Yalanka were reported to be due to oxygen running out. Officials said they were still waiting for a report on the deaths. The Deputy Chief Minister says meeting the oxygen demand is a huge challenge, but seems to put some onus on the hospitals. Many of the hospitals, they have not created capacity for the storage of oxygen. So the storage tanks have not been built properly and they are dependent on cylinders. And those cylinders which they, have, which they have with them, that itself also is not sufficient enough to cater their requirement. Yes. So many are running short of cylinders as well as beyond their capacity they have been adventing people. 
the demand for oxygen is up over eightfold. I think it has scaled up by eight, uh, eight and a half times. Even then we are able to procure and supply every day to the all the hospital managements and the hospitals. We are trying our best and it has been addressed very effectively. Not all would agree. Social media is flooded with appeals from people asking for ICU beds and oxygen. Almost a little more than 70-75% of the overall uh, patient, I mean hospital beds being outside the ICU which were hardly requiring uh, oxygen supplementation previously but now more than 90% of patients being COVID patients and of which uh, almost 80 to 90% of them requiring significant amount of oxygen supplementation and that is what is making uh, the difference of oxygen consumption. The city corporation, the BBMP, has appealed for help with procuring oxygen concentrators, oxygen cylinders and NIV ventilators. The opposition Congress chief says the oxygen shortage deaths are murder. Bengaluru and Karnataka, like so many places across India, desperately needing as much oxygen as they can get in this overwhelming second wave. Maya Sharma for NDTV. Now, two people have been arrested in Bengaluru after Bengaluru South MP Tejasvi Surya alleged that there is a scam involving the BBMP officials to allot scarce beds in hospitals following the payment of bribes. During a press meet, the BJP MP said that BBMP booking site says all beds are full, but so many are getting discharged. Patients are even dying, but the BBMP site continues to say that all beds are booked. There's a nexus of BBMP officials, Arogya Mitra people in hospitals and outside agents. Is what Surya said, that beds were allotted by the BBMP to patients in home isolation who were not even aware they'd been given such a bed. When they did not get admitted within 12 hours, the bed was auto-unblocked, he said, adding that this had happened in thousands of cases. He said the BBMP officials would then find someone to buy the bed. Now, Bengaluru police, as we mentioned, have arrested two accused who were allegedly selling hospital beds to COVID patients. Uh, Rohit and Netra both have been arrested in this case. An FIR of a bed blocking registered uh, has been registered at the Jayanagar police station and uh, they were booked under various sections and uh, they sold ICU beds to patients. They used to charge them between 25,000 to 50,000. The police also uh, seized their bank account and the couple and the, a couple of their accomplices have also yet to be arrested. Now, Kong There's a nexus of certain BBMP officers, certain Arogya Mitras in hospitals and certain private agents outside who have made this bribe for bed scam. People who are at home isolation, who are not even aware, who are not even in need of hospitalization, beds are blocked under their names and under their BU numbers. Thereafter, certain people who are outside agents speak to the people in charge in the war rooms and then re-allot the bed to those people who make a certain payment to a certain person outside. Now, Congress leader D.K. Shiv Kumar tweeted that he congratulated Tejasvi Surya and the other BJP MLAs for exposing the corruption in bed allocation by their party government and corporation. And then he goes on to ask, under whose control is the BBMP? They should immediately name the BJP minister responsible for people suffering so much. With that time for us to slip into a short break, on the other side, we'll focus on COVID in Maharashtra. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now, Maharashtra is one of the worst affected states with around 6.6 .6 lakh active cases. Mumbai reported 2,554 cases in the last 24 hours and 62 deaths during that period. So a dip there of uh, from the earlier numbers. And Maharashtra reported 51,880 cases and 900 COVID deaths. The fatality rate is 1.49%. 
So in Mumbai, for the past couple of days, the cases are declining. The BMC says the oxygen beds available are nearly 2,000. But despite that, there's a demand for oxygen concentrators. However, the market has very little or no supply. Hitali Devrukkar lost her paternal grandmother two days ago because of COVID. Her oxygen levels were 95 initially and suddenly the saturation levels dropped to 75 and then to 64. By the time she took her to hospital, grandmother was dead. Now Hitali is worried for her maternal grandmother who is 82 and has lungs problem and is on a BiPAP machine used in intensive care units. I'm searching. I'll ask everyone now. But we just want to be prepared now. Yeah. We, just, we don't want to take any chances. Rajesh Bajaj, who owns a surgical equipment store in Mira Bhayandar, about 45 km from Mumbai, came all the way to Dawa Bazaar, a wholesale market in South Mumbai, looking for oxygen concentrators. He says even after checking at five to six stores, he is unable to find concentrators in the market. Oxygen concentrators are machines that can be used at homes. The machines reduce the nitrogen content from the air, thereby increasing oxygen supply to patients. These machines are a first line of defense and are not as effective as oxygen from a cylinder of high flow oxygen in hospitals. लोगों को प्रकाश में कोई भी शॉप के अंदर में वहाँ पे ऑक्सीजन कंसेंट्रेटर है नहीं तो पर्सनली लेवल पे मैं आज यहाँ पर लेने आया हूँ कि इफ आई कैन गेट इट आउट तो मैं वहाँ पर हॉस्पिटल्स के अंदर में जहाँ पर भी ऑक्सीजन कंसेंट्रेटर की जरूरत है मैं वहाँ पर उसको वर्कआउट करवा सकता हूँ राजेश he gets 50 to 60 calls a day. Presently the price is about 50,000 rupees per GST. Huh. Ultimately, before it was about 30-35,000 rupees, before COVID. According to the suppliers, currently the price has gone up to anywhere between 45,000 to 50,000 for 5 litre. For 10 litre, non-branded oxygen concentrator is selling for rupees 90,000 while branded is anywhere between 1 lakh to 1.5 lakh. This is despite the fact that the government has slashed GST rates on concentrators to 12%, down from 28%. The reduced GST rates are applicable till June 30th. So I will not say black marketing, because it is not major, because there is no MRP in the thread girl, that you have to put it on it, or the government has put it on it. So it is the same that the demand and supply, which has been saved, which has been saved, which has been saved, which has been saved, which has been saved. Although the cases in Mumbai are going down for quite few days now, people are really anxious and that is why there is a high demand for oxygen concentrators. But with limited or literally no supply in the market, the prices have shot up. In Mumbai with camera person Praveen G. Rohit, this is Purva Chitnas for NDTV. West Bengal has reported several incidents of post-poll violence in a state where elections have historically been very violent. Mamta Banerjee too met with officials of the state yesterday, a day ahead of her swearing-in, which is today. The BJP is also holding a dharna against the violence today. BJP President J.P. Nadda, along with senior BJP leaders, meeting people who have come here, uh, people who have been actually affected by post-poll violence. <laughs> Sharnulata Odhikari has lost her 40-year-old husband Horan Odhikari on Sunday, the day of the election results. She says he was dragged out of his home at Pratapnagar in Shonarpur, about 60 kilometers from Kolkata, and beaten to death. Several other members of the family were also injured. Mr. Nadda will lead a dharna in protest in Kolkata tomorrow, the same day that Mamata Banerjee takes oath as Chief Minister of West Bengal for the third time. और चिप टीएमसी के गुंडे कार्यकर्ता वो हरण अधिकारी के घर में गए बच्चों को धमकाया उनके ऊपर अटैक किया और मिसेज हरण अधिकारी जो हरण अधिकारी की पत्नी थी उनके मुंह पर वार किया उनका दांत तोड़ दिया और बाद में हरण अधिकारी को वहां से निकालकर घसीटते हुए पीटते हुए इस रास्ते से उसको ले गए और रास्ते में पीटते पीटते 
उनकी जान चली गई वो नहीं सुंदर वाला उन्हीं गाच का टेटल गाच उन्हीं जोगन केटेस सिलो तो खुनी उरा मारवाज जोन चेष्टा करे चिलो बम फेल चिलो पाय पाय ता उन्हीं जे बाड़ी से आर वो थोड़ा बोली नहीं रास्ता योर कुम कोत्ते ही पारे उरा जीते चे बोले टीम सिलो यार बामर बोले जे भाद दी था ही भाद दी ची उन्हीं खेस हुए पड़े ची मिस्टर नड्डा हैड रिपीटेडली अटैक्ड ममता बनर्जी ऑन लॉ एंड ऑर्डर एंड ही डिड सो अगेन टुडे लीडर्स ऑफ़ द कांग्रेस एंड द लेफ्ट टू हैव साउंडेड एन अलार्म एंड कंडेम्ड द ट्रिनमूल फॉर द वायलेंस द ट्रिनमूल हैज with the prime minister making a call to the governor on the situation and the ministry of home affairs seeking a report from the state the issue may snowball further momata banerji the chief minister has dismissed the bjp claims as false and has warned the party against trying to provoke communal violence in bengal after losing the elections hum to really nahi kiya hai aap dekho itna jit ka baad mein bhi bjp itna atrocities kiya cap pe itna atrocities kiya इलेक्शन कमीशन इतने एट्रोसिटीज किया उसके बाद भी मैंने बोला सब शांत रहे हो अ डे अहेड ऑफ अ स्वेरिंग इन ममता बनर्जी हेल्ड अ मीटिंग विद टॉप ऑफिशियल्स ऑफ द स्टेट ऑन द इशू द ट्रिनमूल कांग्रेस सेज वंस शी टेक्स चार्ज देयर विल बी ट्रांसफर्स ऑफ ऑफिशियल्स टू इंश्योर लॉ एंड ऑर्डर प्रिवेल्स इन द स्टेट इन कोलकाता विद कैमरा पर्सन जीडी शंकर एंड मोनिति बनर्जी सौरभ गुप्ता एंड टीवी Well, let's now go across to Saurabh for more. And Saurabh, you're outside the Raj Bhavan today. Uh, Mamta Banerjee will take her oath as the uh, for her third term as Chief Minister. Give us more details about uh, this swearing-in ceremony. It's going to be very small. Absolutely, it's going to be a scaled-down ceremony because of COVID protocols. The Chief Minister is expected to be sworn in after 10 o'clock in the morning. We are at the Raj Bhavan where that swearing-in will take place, but of course it will be a curtailed, scaled-down ceremony because of COVID norms. This is, of course, the Raj Bhavan in Kolkata where the Chief Minister will ar ar arrive. Remember, India's only woman Chief Minister at this point will be sworn in for her third term today. As she takes oath as the Chief Minister of Bengal, the oath of office will be administered to her by the Governor Shri Jagdeep Dhankar, who's of course uh, often been at loggerheads with her. Many have also, uh, you know, questioned his role. But in all of this, today, of course, it's a day of, uh, you know, uh, immense important in terms of uh, Mamta Banerjee's political journey. Uh, this is, of course, the third time she will be taking oath, and it's uh, remember she's won a stupendous victory over the uh, Bharatiya Janata Party, which actually uh, threw everything it had in the Bengal elections, trying down chief ministers to senior leaders to the prime minister to the home minister uh, to money. Uh, everything was uh, thrown, and the BJP uh, hasn't managed to unseat Mamta. So obviously, she's now emerged as an axis of. Uh, political opposition to the bjp given the stupendous victory once she takes oath she will become chief minister of india uh, i beg your pardon chief minister of west bengal and what she will uh, you know uh, say uh, what she uh, is uh, planning to do perhaps one of those things that we saw uh, yesterday was that meeting with top officials at her home remember the bjp has alleged that there's been wide uh, scale political violence while there have been uh, there is evidence of political violence like we've been reported in some cases a lot of fake news and fake videos have also been shared on social media uh, and mamta banerji has said that you know all the officials at this point in charge are not people who are appointed by her they are appointed by the election commission so perhaps you will see mamta banerji uh, you know take charge and immediately get down to business because remember having said and done everything covid is the number one challenge and she's made it clear that covid tackling covid will be her number one challenge in the state as she takes oath for a third time here at the raj bhavan in kolkata right uh, sorry also briefly tell us about the protest or the dharna that's planned today by the bjp yes you know i mean to coincide with her swearing in the bjp has planned a dharna uh, obviously this is something that uh, the bjp has announced earlier Uh, they say it's in protest against the political violence that has taken place, the post-poll political violence that has taken place in the state. Uh, but of course, you know, the overwhelming focus uh, of uh, today's political activities in the state will not only be uh, the swearing-in of Mamata Banerjee as Chief Minister of West Bengal for the third term, 
but some of that focus will also be on that dharna. Uh, but the Trinamul leaders have scoffed at the BJP. In fact, Mohua Moitro, uh, uh, a Trinamul MP, uh, tweeted to say that, you know, that JP Nadda <coughs> made several visits to Bengal during the elections to unseat Mamata Banerjee. He's now here. Uh, to push for president's rule and to create a narrative that there needs to be president's rule in the state, but he will fail this time too. So the TMC is uh, scoffing at the BJP's, uh, you know, efforts to, uh, you know, sort of uh, what it calls hype uh, the political violence. But there has been some amount of political violence in the state. We've reported in that story you saw. And that's something that perhaps, uh, you know, JP Nadda will try and keep the focus on during his dharna. All right, and even the governor has just uh, tweeted regarding the political violence and how it cannot be allowed to continue. Thanks so much, Saurabh, for joining us with those details. Now, in an interview to NDTV, Mamta Banerjee spoke about the COVID challenge. She also hit out at the central government, saying they're spending lots of money on the Prime Minister's new house and uh, the new parliament, but the Prime Minister is not able to provide 30,000 crore for universal vaccination. And uh, BJP, I am telling you, they are really the party, I am telling you, the communal party. It is it. So all the time their feeling says to create the communal tribal. They are the troublemonger people. And they are creating all the confusion, the fake video, the uh, fake video, the fake uh, word. Fake, uh, and they are misusing the uh, power, central power, the agency's power. They are misusing the central power, the home ministry's power. And... Every time they want to think, want to think that there is no meaning of the federalism. They want to demolish the federalism. They want to bulldoze the federal character. That we are not. That public gave a befitting reply because we didn't what they are doing. Even they are not allowing the universal vaccination to the people of this country. When COVID is in so serious situation, where is the oxygen? Now they are not giving the oxygen to the people. Even the people are suffering every day. The COVID situation. I appeal to them that give uh, COVID uh, universal vaccination to all. Even I said uh, that we are willing to pay for the vaccine, uh, vaccine. So you send us the vaccine. That also they are not going to give it. I think they need oxygen more now. They need political oxygen now more. Now my request to be would be to the government. Only 30,000 courts are involved. If they give 100 courts, 140 courts people, the universal vaccination. Now you will appreciate how much money is involved to purchase the new flight of prime ministers, how much money is uh, involved for the new parliament building, how much money is for the uh, stadium or for the statue. So they are spending lots of money. Even what, how much money they spend in Bengal election. That money only can give the, if this money should have been spent only for the vaccination, this should be. This should have been a complete the vaccination process. Thirty thousand yeah, there, and it is not that the outside of the back. Outside of the back, it is that BJP is trying to create some communal tension. They are. They want because they have lost. They cannot forget that. Well, moving on to other news now, the other swearing-in that's going to take place today, MK Stalin will meet with the governor and stake claim for government. He will be sworn in as a chief minister on Friday. Let's go across to Sam Daniel uh, for more. And Sam, it, it's a day uh, MK Stalin has been waiting a long, long time for. Uh, tell us more about how it's going to be in the state. Right, Sam, if you can hear me. Gargi, I'm not able to hear you very clearly, but yes, uh, at 10 o'clock this morning, DMK Chief MK Stalin would drive to Raj Bhavan to stake claim for, to form the government in Tamil Nadu to become the Chief Minister. Last night, the DMK Legislature Party had unanimously elected him to be their leader. And uh, after many long years, the DMK has managed to get a majority of its own, although it fought these elections in alliance with the Congress and a few other parties. And already MK Stalin has started meeting senior bureaucrats in Tamil Nadu. And now the swearing-in will take place on Friday uh, at a simple ceremony in the Ross Bhavan campus in Chennai. A few days ago, Stalin also confirmed that taking into account the COVID situation, uh, he would not want that to be a grand affair. Tamil Nadu is known for these occasions and it's going to be a very simple affair. 
the time is not officially announced yet, but uh, some sources in the DMK say it could be early evening on Friday. Still so much of speculation on who all would be uh, part of his cabinet. But uh, already after holding meetings, particularly with reference to containing COVID in the, in the state where the daily tally has crossed 20,000, uh, Stalin has advised authorities to ensure easy availability of beds, ICUs and oxygen and also sale of remdesivir and other vital drugs, not just in Chennai as it's being done now, but also in all the other major towns across the state. And yesterday, in a statement, he has also appealed to people to look at these new restrictions which will come into force from the 6th of this month as a self-imposed restriction to break the chain so that the curve can be flattened. He is asking people to stay indoors as much as possible. If it's unavoidable, he's asking them to wear masks and follow COVID norms. And he wants this COVID containment measure become a public moment of sorts. So all eyes would be on that meeting of Stalin with governors taking claim at 10 o'clock. And then perhaps he may announce exactly what time on Friday he would take over as chief minister. All right, uh, Sam, thanks so much for joining us uh, with that news now of the top court. And uh, the top court today will deliver its verdict on the constitutional validity of the Maratha quota in Maharashtra. A five-judge constitution bench will also decide whether the 50% cap on quota imposed by the top court in the Mandal judgment needs to be revisited. Well, let's go across to NDTV's uh, Vedya for more. And uh, Vedya, the issue of Maratha quota is, is a burning issue in Maharashtra, but uh, very uh, interesting, also very key will be uh, the top court looking at this 50% cap on quota? Yes, of course. Uh, apart from the constitutional validity of the Maratha quota, the important thing would be about the 50% cap. Uh, during the course of the hearing itself, uh, I mean, a uh, few states have said that they have socially, economically backward classes. They can, I mean, increase the quota. But Supreme Court said it will look into it because this uh, Mandal judgment was given by a nine-judge bench. If it wants to be revisited, then probably it will take some time because 11 judges will have to sit. But will this all happen will be known by 10.30 a.m. today. But it's an interesting thing because Tamil Nadu has 69% quota. Even I think Haryana has also I mean, crossed the 50% cap. So if the court says no, 50% cap will have to be there, then politically it will be a big storm. Anyway, let's wait and see what happens. All right, uh, Vedya, of course, we'll return to you for all the latest updates there. Thank you so much for joining us. And returning to news from Tamil Nadu, we've been hearing about the oxygen crisis in Delhi and in Bengaluru, but now in a hospital in Tamil Nadu as well, there are allegations that 11 people uh, died in the Chengal Pattu government hospital overnight. Some families are alleging that it was oxygen shortage. Let's go across to Sam for more on this. Sam, give us the details. Gargi, this has happened at the Government Medical College Hospital at Chengalpet outside Chennai. At least 11 patients have died overnight and uh, some of these families alleged that there was a shortage of oxygen supply and that's why they've died. But uh, authorities, they deny there was any shortage of oxygen supply. They say they have enough supply. They have their own uh, generating oxygen generating facility there. Nevertheless, authorities say a probe is on to check whether there was any problem with the pressure of the oxygen supply to these beds. And we expect the collector and the dean of the Chengalpet Medical College Hospital to brief uh, the media. But authorities say these patients who have died are non-COVID patients. And generally, over the last uh, few weeks at least, they say every day, they've been seeing at least 10 to 13 casualties overnight. And in that sense, uh, they say it cannot be because of oxygen, it could be because of the condition of these patients, but more clarity a little later. But also, authorities point out that although technically Tamil Nadu, taking into account the oxygen it produces, will not have any kind of shortage at all, now that it has come under the centralized allotment by the central government based on the court order, they say Tamil Nadu's updated requirement do not get reflected in the list in the quantum of oxygen being supplied to the states by the central government. For example, they say already the requirement is 300 ton metric tons, but the list only talks about around 250 metric tons and they point out perhaps the high court order with regard to the Delhi government is keeping officials little 
jittery about increasing the quantum for other states because that could be seen as a contempt of court when the real demand is also rising considerably in states like Tamil Nadu. So they want authorities to make sure the supply is updated in tune with the requirement, particularly in states like Chennai, in Tamil Nadu, where the numbers are rising. Got it. All right, Sab, thanks so much for joining us with those details. So an official statement on these debts is expected soon. Hello and welcome. You're watching NDTV. I'm Gargi Rawat. Our top story, the death of COVID patients due to not, non, non-supply of oxygen to hospitals is a criminal act and not less than a genocide. That's what the Allahabad High Court said on Tuesday amid reports of shortage of medical oxygen due to the rise in COVID infections. They said we are at pain in observing that death of COVID patients just for non-supplying of oxygen to the hospitals is a criminal act and not less than a genocide by those who have been entrusted the task to ensure continuous procurement and supply chain of liquid medical oxygen. This uh, read the order uh, by a bench of Justice Ajit Kumar and Justice Siddharth Varma. The High Court observed that stories of hoarding of oxygen cylinders and harassment emitted out to the poor who were begging for an oxygen cylinder to save the life of their near and dear ones, both at the end of district administration and police administration are being viraled on social media and mentioning deaths of patients in hospitals in Meerut and Lucknow. They said we find these news items showing a quite contrary picture to the one claimed by the government that there was sufficient supply of oxygen. And in Delhi as well, the oxygen crisis, uh, the central government's failure to implement the Delhi High Court's order to immediately supply a full quota of oxygen to Delhi has evoked the judge's wrath. Uh, The court which had ordered that Delhi must be given its full quota of oxygen by whatever means asked the government to explain why a contempt case should not be initiated against it. Enough is enough, said the High Court. We will not take a no regarding oxygen supply. The centre, meanwhile, has said that a compliance affidavit is being filed before the Supreme Court. Now, the central government has revised the country's coronavirus testing rules to reduce pressure on diagnostic labs amid a spurt of COVID cases. Healthy interstate travellers and COVID patients being discharged from hospitals after recovery must not be tested. The centre said that over 2,500 labs in the country are working under tremendous pressure because of the rapidly growing caseloads. The centre said people who tested positive once, either by the rapid test or the gold standard RT-PCR, must not be tested again. And now the impact of COVID in rural India and UP's Bulan Shahar. At least 18 people died in a fortnight just in one village of Parwara during Panchayat elections. They all had COVID-like symptoms, but no COVID tests were done to establish if the virus was indeed the killer. Now a large number of migrant, uh, migrants, remember, have returned home to vote. And that seems to have increased the spread of the virus. The government has now initiated COVID testing on a mission mode in the villages, but too little, too late. At Parvana village, 18 kilometers of Bulan Shahar, public announcements calling people to undergo COVID tests. NDTV visited the home of Nazakat Sefi, who used to work as a carpenter in Faridabad, but had returned home after the last lockdown. He recently took ill, was shifted to two hospitals, but died on April 22nd. Treatment proper nahi mila tha. इसलिए हार्ट की जो प्रॉब्लम हुई है हार्ट अटैक हुआ कभी भी उसको हार्ट की प्रॉब्लम नहीं थी ना बीपी हाई था कभी भी उसका नॉर्मल सिचुएशन बाइक पे गया ट्रीटमेंट लेने के लिए ना कि कोई एंबुलेंस में द लास्ट राइट्स ऑफ बूरो देवी वाज बीइंग परफॉर्म्ड इन द सेम विलेज इट इज सस्पेक्टेड शी टू डाइड ऑफ कोविड विलेजर्स से एट लीस्ट 18 अदर्स हैव डाइड ड्यू टू द स्प्रेड ऑफ कोरोना वायरस ड्यूरिंग द पंचायत इलेक्शंस 16 ईयर ओल्ड सुमित वाज टेकन टू टू हॉस्पिटल्स बट ही डिडंट रिटर्न अलाइव तुरंत औरंगाबाद ले के गए औरंगाबाद ले जाने के बाद में उसको एक ड्रिप लगाई ड्रिप के बाद में उसके एक दर्द हुआ अचानक दर्द में उस डॉक्टर ने इंजेक्शन लगाया लेकिन उससे कोई रिलीफ नहीं मिली फिर हम दूसरे हॉस्पिटल में ले गए वहाँ भी उसने ड्रिप लगाई इंजेक्शन लगाया वहाँ भी कोई रिलीफ नहीं मिली फिर हम और बुलिंग शेल ले जा रहे थे रास्ते में चरौरा जाके उसने दम तो A health department team is at the village temple to appeal to the residents to get themselves tested. हर एक व्यक्ति का चेकअप करेंगी जो भी किसी को भी कोई दिक्कत है उसके लिए वहीं पर दवाई का वितरण भी किया जाएगा और इनकी कोरोना से संबंधी जांच भी की जाएगी 
अगर मृत्यु का और भी कारण के क्योंकि मृत्यु का कारण वहाँ से कोरोना पेशेंट निकले नहीं है ज़्यादा तो उनकी भी जाँचें की जाएंगी कुछ और कारण तो नहीं है In Gularia village of Barabanki district, mm -hmm. ten migrant laborers who stripped back home was sponsored by the Pradhan candidate, so they could vote in the panchayat elections. All of them took ill. A few had to be hospitalized. From campaign to voting and counting, COVID protocols were largely forgotten during the panchayat elections. Add to that an influx of migrant workers who returned home to vote. तो इस बार हमें गांव में एहतियात करने की बहुत ज्यादा जरूरत है मजेदार गांव के पेशेंट बढ़े हैं पिछले साल के कंपैरिजन में कोरोना के अ रूरल कोविड सर्च दैट हैज बीन मास्ट बाय लो टेस्टिंग विद कमाल खान एंड उमा सुधीर उसामा शाह फॉर एनडी टीवी and the latest now from karnataka bengaluru has crossed 3 lakh active cases active cases in karnataka are now a 4 lakh 64000 uh, 46 46 lakh i beg your pardon of 4,363 in Bengaluru. It's uh, 3 lakhs 1,712. The positivity rate in Karnataka is 29 percent. Now, even in Bengaluru, there's an oxygen shortage, which has been a major issue ever since the second wave of COVID set in, and it continues to hit patients in the city. With several hospitals even asking them to shift to other facilities as they have run out of stock. And Bengaluru South MP Tejaswi Surya has alleged that there is a scam involving BBMP officials to lot scarce beds in hospitals following the payment of bribes. Now two arrests have been made. During a press meet yesterday, the BJP MP said that BBMP booking sites say all beds are full, but so many our patients are getting discharged. Some are dying, but the BBMP site continues to claim all are booked. There's a nexus of BBMP officials, Arogya Mitra people, and hospitals and outside agents in allotting those beds for money. There's a nexus of certain BBMP officers, certain Arogya Mitras in hospitals, and certain private agents outside who have made this bribe for bed scam. People who are at home isolation, who are not even aware, who are not even in need of hospitalisation, beds are blocked under their names and under their BU numbers. Thereafter, certain people who are outside agents. speak to the people in charge in the war rooms and then reallot the bed to those people who make a certain payment to a certain person outside well let's go across to maya now for more and maya after uh, the bjp mp spoke out against this nexus uh, two people have also been arrested and investigations are under way All right the Bengaluru police have arrested two accused who are allegedly selling hospital beds to covid patients in fact the two accused Rohit and Netra both have been arrested in this case an FIR of bed blocking has also been registered they were booked under various sections and according to the police they sold the ICU beds to patients and charged anything between 25000 to 50000 the police also seized over 1 lakh from their bank account a couple of their accomplices have yet to be arrested the police suspect the hand of a B bbmp insider in this case without whose help uh, the beds cannot be allotted the investigation is under way congress leader dk shiv kumar also uh, spoke out over this congratulating tejasvi surya but at the same time saying under whose control is the bbmp they should immediately name the bjp minister responsible well let's go back to maya now for more and maya arrests have been made but also uh, the congress there uh, hitting out saying who is responsible at the top very serious charges made by the bengaluru south mp tejaswi surya with unnamed bbmp officials he says involved in this scam if it is true it's a really terrible thing of allotting beds to patients based on money being paid that actually there was false booking of beds of patients who were in home isolation and who didn't even know that they had been allotted beds and when the beds were released then giving those beds to people after the payment of money with two people arrested in that case ironically the bbmp actually has the bjp the ruling bjp in the state as a majority party the mayor gautam kumar is a bjp cooperator so tejasvi surya by criticizing the bbmp is also 
attacking an institution in which his party, the BJP, has a majority. But the police are investigating two arrests so far, a very, very disturbing in case indeed, because, of course, Bengaluru, with over three lakh active cases, has been struggling for sufficient oxygen supply. People have been struggling to get hospital beds. And for them to know that perhaps there were beds vacant, but they were not allotted it because of some irregularity, some financial scam, it would be extremely disturbing for those families who have been struggling to find a bed for their loved ones. The investigations do continue on those allegations made by Tejasvi Surya, with the police hoping to get to the bottom of this. But meanwhile, oxygens continue to suffer for Uh, They need oxygen, hospitals needing oxygen, sending out appeals also. Some of those appeals met just in time. But Karnataka really trying to increase its oxygen quota from the center as well and trying to make sure there is a streamlined supply of oxygen. They're talking about converting trucks using, which usually carry nitrogen to carry oxygen as well. Disturbing situation in Bengaluru, a huge pressure for oxygen and for beds and the potential scam involving BBMP officials making things all the more disturbing two arrests so far. Right, Maya, thanks so much for joining us with this. And uh, absolutely, it's very disturbing to think people are making money off people's misery. Well, with that time for us to slip into a short break, on the other side, we'll speak to top doctors about the oxygen crisis. Welcome back. Well, let's now focus on the oxygen crisis, the COVID crisis and the crisis of vaccine shortages in the country. To talk more about this, we're joined by a panel of doctors. Right now we have with us Dr. Padma Srivastav, Chief Neuroscience Center, Ames. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And first and foremost, this oxygen crisis in Delhi is just continuing. It's been over two weeks of the crisis. The High Court has been directing the center again and again to ensure the oxygen is provided, but it's just not stopping. We continue getting SOSs from hospitals every day and similar crises taking place in Bengaluru as well. Absolutely, absolutely. The, the thing is that o- oxygen is the only drug which is proven for COVID and we, we've been talking about this over and over again. Now, the, essentially, the ramping up of the requirement is going up every single day. So if it was, say, even in uh, centers, big institutes, you know, it is it is ramping up a few tons every single day because of the increase in the load of admissions and more importantly, the oxygen requirement. And, you know, even the wave, even the wave that we know, Gargi, is that there is the infections go up and then the hospitalizations and then the deaths. So right now we are at the place where there would be a wave of hospitalizations and you can see the data that there are a lot of deaths happening. The infections, probably there's a little dip but the hospitalizations and the deaths. So obviously the oxygen requirement will will go up that many, many times. And there is a problem in demand and supply. Thing is, people keep saying that there is a lot of production and there is a problem with the transport chains. So the transport obviously needs to be addressed in a war footing. And I guess that is being done. I hope it's being done. But we're not seeing that kind of results. But the one good thing is that the oxygen plants have been set up, two major institutes now. So I think that would give a big buffer. I hope it would ease out in the next couple of days. But as it happens, we know that there are tragedies striking all around us. But yes, this is a calamity. And I do hope, as a doctor, I do hope, uh, you know, I I don't have to be placed in the situation where I'm completely helpless in giving this. Absolutely. It's just fright frightening right now. You know, people are dying due to lack of oxygen outside hospitals, even in hospitals. We've had uh, patients dying, including a doctor who died at the Batra Hospital due to the lack of oxygen. Also, we keep hearing of a lot of aid that has come in from abroad, oxygen, concentrators, etc. Doctor, do you have any idea being at Ames, uh, you know, when this will be distributed? Do you know of any hospitals that have received this aid in Delhi? So I know that the oxygen plant has been established. It's, it's and it's probably going to be functional today in Ames as well as in Subdarjan. So that's a huge welcome news. And the aid, I believe, again, I do see in your channels that they're trying to iron out these customs and coming in. And yes, we do get circulars every day. 
that there is an allotment of oxygen concentrators and we have got that list that from different countries and the, the concentrators as well as cylinders and other aid in terms of medications have been distributed all across Delhi. I did see that list where all the major hospitals have been listed. It's not just AIMS or Sabdajang or LMJP or others. Even the private institutes and even the other hospitals have got, at least in paper, have seen this, that they've been distributed. So I think they are now being distributed, yes. All right, we're also joined by Dr. Raj Gopal Jambunathan, a Chief Consultant Cardiologist, Kaveri Heart and Multi-Speciality Hospital, joining us from Mysore. Thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us. And recently, the news of deaths in Karnataka due to the lack of oxygen. Of course, we've been focusing a lot on the Delhi oxygen crisis, but in Karnataka as well, even in Bengaluru, hospitals are sending out SOSs. What is now being done there? The... Uh incident is very unfortunate uh, uh, the uh, area that's Chamarajnagar being a little uh, isolated uh, place in Karnataka it's, it's actually a, a partly neglected uh, place in Karnataka not many politicians also do go there but medically the facilities are quite uh, uh, inadequate there the, there's only a, a single government uh, set up there uh, I think this is a, uh, it's a very current situation where uh, the, uh, the, the, the administration was caught uh, on the wrong side. But I am sure it has uh, got a lot of uh, uh, the eye of the media now. Uh, the facilities are getting ramped up and I'm sure in a right. couple of So if you could uh, tell us, what is the process there in Karnataka? We do know here in Delhi, there's a nodal officer who, you know, all the poor hospitals keep sending out SOSs to, and when that doesn't work, then they go public with their demand and urgency of how they're running out of oxygen. Uh, there in Karnataka as well, we're told there is supposed to be, uh, you know, uh, some sort of panel in charge of this entire uh, oxygen supply issue. Uh, yes, actually, the, cons uh, the uh, entire media and the entire the administration they have been concentrating only on the city of Bangalore uh, because the numbers are quite uh, high there and there, there is a shortage which is visible. But uh, the, uh, the pra practically the, the tertiary, the quaternary centers, the, the uh, peripheries where the, uh, the uh, numbers are increasing now, that is, the, that is where the uh, deficiency is very much seen now. I, 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 the, the government has now uh, promised to look into it and I think it has to be done in a walk of thing now. Right, and uh, what has the impact of the lockdown so far been? Has, has it had uh, any uh, you know, major impact? What are you seeing on the ground? Medically speaking, a lockdown would uh, uh, show its impact only after the second week. Unfortunately, sure. the government has uh, announced a, a lockdown of only two weeks. I am sure it has to be extended for the uh, the... Uh, effect to be seen. Up to now, there is absolutely no uh, change in the numbers or it's actually going up with uh, every passing day. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on NDTV. Doctors are uh, joining us this morning and we'll continue to highlight these issues being faced by, uh, you know, hospitals across the country, the oxygen crisis. And uh, doctor, as you're emphasizing that there is a need perhaps for a longer lockdown for the situation in Karnataka to settle because even now the cases are simply going up. The positivity rate is simply too high. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Well, let's get you news and now from uh, West Bengal, where uh, India's only woman chief minister, Mamta Banerjee, is going to be sworn in today for her third term. And the swearing-in ceremony will take place this morning at Raj Bhavan. It will be a small uh, function uh, and she will be sworn in by the governor, Jagdeep Dhankar. Meanwhile, uh, BJP president, J.P. Nadda, is in uh, Kolkata and he'll be holding a dharna against the violence that has been going on in the state after the election results. Remember, there have been allegations on all sides of violence, but especially the BJP is claiming their workers have been attacked and houses burned. Uh, in fact, the governor tweeted this morning as well, concerned at the unabated reports of unprecedented uh, post-poll uh, violence uh, taking place in spite of flagging this. Well, let's go across to Saurabh for more uh, on this. And Saurabh, tell us what's happening right now. We can see those visuals are coming in. Right, sort of. if you can hear me, take us through, uh, you know, what's going to happen and it's going to be a small function, only Mamta Banerjee will be sworn in.
And there you can see visuals from yesterday when Mamta Banerjee went and met with the governor and uh, she will be uh, going uh, to the Raj Bhavan and it will be a small uh, ceremony, really a small function in which she will be sworn in. Only she is going to be sworn in today. Well, let's go back to Saurabh and try our luck now. Hopefully he can hear me now. Saurabh, if you could tell us uh, what's going to happen now. In the morning here at the throne room of the Raj Bhavan and this is the place where she will be uh, taking a road. The governor what is happening, guys? All right, we seem to be having some kind of a technical uh, problem there with Saurabh, but clearly he's getting uh, the audio very late and uh, responding late, as you can see there. But as we said, Mamta Banerjee will be sworn in this morning at around 10.45 in the morning. It'll be a very modest ceremony at the Raj Bhavan, and uh, he will, uh, and only she will be sworn in. As we said, BJP President J.P. Nadda is also there. He will be holding a dharna. Uh, Trinamool MP uh, Mahua Moitra, in fact, tweeted about J.P. Nadda's visit, saying all the trips by J.P. Nadda didn't win BJP rule in West Bengal, and yet another trip to try for president's rule now. This is something uh, that the Trinamool has been mentioning, the reason uh, that the attacks, remember there has been violence, there have been incidents of violence which we have reported on taking place in West Bengal after the results were declared. Well, let's uh, try our luck and hopefully third time lucky with Saurabh. Uh, Saurabh, uh, over to you now. Well, you know, the Chief Minister will be sworn in at 10.45 in the morning here at the throne room of the Raj Bhavan. Now, this is, of course, in, uh, you know, in keeping in mind the COVID protocols, there will be very little, uh, you know, sort of uh, celebration. But there will be, of course, some people who will attend, some personalities like Saurav Ganguly is expected to attend. Remember, there was a lot of speculation during the elections itself about Saurav Ganguly, but he's uh, coming in as a guest here. Uh, Buddha Dev Bhattacharya, the former chief minister, has been invited, but he's unlikely to attend on account of ill health. <coughs> but in other, uh, otherwise, there are a lot of uh, you know people who will attend, but they will all be sitting far apart from each other inside the throne room. Mamata Banerjee will take oath. The governor will administer, you, uh, administer the oath at 10.45 in the morning, after which she will uh, be here and then head to Nobanno, the secretariat, which is where she will be given a guard of honor. From there, uh, she will, uh, the first uh, you know, sort of uh, thing on her list to do is of course hold a high level meeting and this high level meeting is primarily on the COVID situation uh, with top officials including the Chief Secretary, Home Secretary, DGPs, uh, Commissioner of Police and also there will be a meeting on law and order. So this is the more or less the plan for the day. She will be heading to Novano after the swearing in here at 10.45. Saurav Ganguly is attending. Uh, this is, of course, uh, at the throne room of the Raj Bhavan where the swearing in will take place at 10.45 in the morning. All right, so that's very interesting information that Saurav Ganguly will be attending that swearing in. And yes, of course, uh, we all remember uh, the, how much speculation there was about his role in the Bengal elections and whether uh, you know, he would be roped in. Thanks so much, Saurav, for joining us there with the very latest. With that time for us to slip into a short break, more news on the other side. Stay with us.